Hello and welcome once again to White Lotus of Light. Uh, today is, I guess, under the educational series is how I'd put it, but I am going to be reading a transcript of a prophecy that I channeled from the virtues actually on Christmas Day 2023 about um, upcoming events for 2024. It's uh, really quite interesting and, and fascinating, and there's a lot to it. Um, when I channel, I don't actually usually catch uh, most of what I'm channeling. So listening to it again was a bit like, whoa, uh, even though it's 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 my voice, um, the virtues are, are speaking through me when I do this. And so then, it, um, you know, th those words were surprising to me, despite the fact that they came out of my mouth, uh, hearing them again um, in a non-altered state of getting out of the way to be a channel for the virtues. I was kind of like, wow, uh, with some of the stuff that came through. Uh, and I just want to say that um, I am not some sort of sole arbiter of truth. I'm just someone who happens to uh, have a God-given uh, psychic ability to do some of these things. And so this isn't mine. Um, this isn't something that's like 100% certain, certain to come true. It is a, the shape of things to come according to the angels. And it's something that will either resonate with you or it won't. And if it doesn't, then that's totally fine. And if it does, then that's wonderful because that means hopefully it's it's helpful to you and to your family. And so um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to say. Ah, yes, the um, the uh, set, part two with Bibu Dev Mesra will be coming out hopefully later this week, although uh, I am very busy and so it may be later because I'm teaching two angelic magic classes actually this week one for Australia and one for the U.S. Um, there was a lot of interest in that so I'll be doing another one sometime in the spring my guess would be April sometime probably mid-April um, yeah so without further ado here is the virtues prophecy for 2024 so I'm going to read this I might get a little stumbly here and there I might editorialize so here's what the virtues said and this is all a direct quote a direct transcript other than if I say okay here's my thoughts on something right so they said 2024 shall be a time of strife it will be a time of war it is the culmination of 6,000 years of Moloch worship by the dark Malachian elites, the Babylonian dark sor sorcerers, the corrupted members of the Chaldeans. That was interesting to me. As the age of Gemini came to a close, duality began to peak. It's talking about the, um, the, uh, the in the great year, you often hear people talking about how we're moving into the age of Aquarius. Um, and by the way, if you haven't watched the Shadow War series, this a lot of this won't make sense to you unless you watch the Shadow War series, so you should watch that, and I'll include a card up there. Um, during the Astrological Great Year, we move through different signs, and uh, you may often hear that we're moving out of the Age of Pisces and into the Age of Aquarius, uh, especially by the Tropical Zodiac Reckoning. So that's what they're referring to here. So as the Age of Gemini came to a close, duality began to peak. The dark ones in their temples with their sorcerous blasphemies came to be aware of a darker, more malevolent being, the one known as Moloch. I'm also going to edit out some words here because I don't want to get hit by the algorithm. And also, I don't even like saying those words. So they go on to say, they harm the children with Epstein-style harm to children, torture and murder that brought forth and begat a blasphemy into the world. The portals, to the, the portals to the lower astral ripped asunder by the children of Moloch. The mind virus spread, metastasizing among many of the elites through dark sorcerers and dark concubines who infiltrated the inner sanctum of the mostly benevolent rulers of that time. <clears throat> Some were dark Luciferian royalty. They succumbed quickly, bowled over by the promise, promises of power by the Molochians, darker still than the darkest, lowest ebb of their Lord Lucifer. They rallied to them the darker fallen angels, those who make Lucifer the light bringer look like a force for good in the world. Talking about by comparison. Coming forth, spat out of the pit of the lower astral, a plague of the dark fallen angels spread. The demons of the Bible sprang into a sort of unlife. The darkness spread from the Near East, 
home of the ancient sacred ones. The Atlanteans who fled the disaster. They had made stops in what would become Carthage and Rome, planting seeds of civilization there that would spring into existence much later. Tyre, Babylon, Chaldea, and settling near the Caucasus, making their way down to Katohayak, Haran, Gobekli Tepe, and other earlier starts of civilization yet to be found. Turkey was the main homeland was the main homeland of the Atlantean refugees, along with Egypt, the Indus Valley, and the Mayan lands, and Mesopotamia in general. The group that would settle in Chaldea had brought with them the Brotherhood of Baal, not to be confused with the Brotherhood of Belial, which we get to that distinction later. They continue, unbeknownst to them, for they worshipped the Most High, or those who were of lower consciousness, Lucifer the Lightbringer, in their midst was the Brotherhood of Baal, hiding in the shadows, plotting a further downfall of human consciousness. Keep in mind this is taking place, and they're talking about the period from the Silver Age into the Bronze Age. Um, plotting a further downfall of human consciousness. The corruption of Epstein-style harm of children spread into the temples in the age of Taurus. The bull god Moloch arose. A corruption of the Mithraic cult. That was originally a higher vibration of Taurus. So I'm going to pause there to say they basically revealed to me that the cult of Mith Mithras was the higher vibration of Taurus, whereas the Malachian cultists uh, infiltrated and darkened and corrupted that and turned it into the darker, lower vibration of Taurus, which is tyranny and dead materialism. So they said... Uh, a corruption of the Mithraic cult that was originally a higher vibration of Taurus. They used the bull icon to represent the male aspect of Moloch and to bring in Mithraic worshippers who worshipped Mithras. Down, down consciousness fell and reached its nadir at the time of King Solomon. King Solomon worked with angels and demons to show the inflection point and hyperduality of Malachian consciousness. Being David's son, but of a higher vibrational order, he began to instill higher vibrational principles of the angels who came to him and had taught him theurgic magic, which he learned side by side with goetic demonic magic. His downfall was brought about by his wife of Tyre, for Tyre had fallen. Tyre was a bastion of good and evil, high knowledge from the Atlantean age, as well as the dark brotherhood of Baal. Apparently Tyre was this like um, storehouse of ancient information uh, some of which was uh, very high level stuff, Luciferian and most high, that have been brought from Atlantis. It was deposited uh, entire for some period of time, apparently. That was, that was what was shown to me. Um, high knowledge from the Atlantean age, as well as the Dark Brotherhood of Baal. The Dark Brotherhood was a further denigration, deeper than even Belial, Lord of Chaos, who in the Golden Age plotted against the most high in the name of Lucifer. So I interject here and I say Belial likely worked on behalf of Moloch in the transition from Luciferian power in the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. They didn't reveal that to me, but it, it makes sense given the dynamic they have here. They say that they go on to say in the Iron Age, Belial now plots against Moloch in favor of Lucifer. Belial, the agent of chaos, assists Lucifer in the changing of ages from gold to silver and iron to bronze. For that is Belial's energy, the tearing down of old structures. Oops, hang on a second. I'm just editing my notes here because I want this for later. The tearing down of the old structures. The chaos that will be unleashed in 2024 shall be overtaken by the spirit of Belial, and he shall do as he always does and destroy the dominant paradigm, paradigm the powers that be, bringing them low. Just as he brought down the Golden Age and kings of old in the Atlantean era, so too shall he bring down the modern kings. The seven kings of the Malachian bloodline shall fall. Makes me think of the seven-headed beast uh, in Revelations. The forces, uh, the forces unleashed by the Malachians shall turn against them when they least expect it. Their dull, witless minds shall not see it coming. They believe there is only factional division among their people, the Malachians. When there are, in fact, many gradients and divisions among the innumerable factions among the Malachians and the Luciferians. The Most High is factionless and liquid at this time. It shall move in the ebbs and flows and in the cracks and creases, which shall widen into vast chasms. 
to form lakes and pools of goodness, high vibrational life-giving waters, the golden age enclaves that you have seen. We shall soon guide you, they were referring to me, into how to create the roots that shall create the great golden bowed trees of the golden age from the humble seeds of the golden age enclaves that you shall create. Now, mind you, uh, that's not something I'm going to do on my own. I just know that I will be a vessel for uh, some degree of, of, of visioning and, 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 and leadership in some capacity, but there'll be uh, thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people who will work on this um, at a creation level. Uh, specifically 144,000, actually, I can, I can reveal that. Um, some shall begin as, some, okay, so continuing about the Golden Age enclaves, some shall begin as tenements of refugees in foreign lands where war will come, for war must come as it does in the great changing of the ages. Disease shall rampage as well. Medicine shall be important, especially herbal medicines of the Most High. Vi vibrational medicines such as homeopathics, Reiki, the rediscovery of the Royal Rife machines and their mass manufacture, even Luciferian med beds and other high technological solutions shall appear in 2024 to 2028. Luciferian light-based healing technologies shall also be revealed in this era, and they shall indeed heal, for though it is a false light, elements of the true light are wedded within it. It cannot be otherwise. This is always Lucifer's undoing. He forgets his nature as that of an angel of light. He has never fully shed that, for he wishes to be like his father, the Most High. He wishes to shine even more brightly, unless until he returns as the prodigal son to the father. But his nature is always such that he heralds the breaking of the dawn, the beginning of the true light's return. This is in the context of a uh, uh, Iron Age shift, of course. Much chaos shall come. The election shall not go as planned for the Malachians, and they will act out with rage. There shall be terrorist attacks before and after the election. But in their midst, the agents of Belial shall turn on their masters, biting the hand that feeds them and swallowing them whole. For they are ravenous dogs of war, starved for days before the battle, released only to turn upon their masters who would deny them food who would divide them and deny them sustenance and divide them against their own people. Even now there are stirrings of discontentment among the Black Bloc legions. They have discovered their, their betrayal by the elites and they await only an opportunity to be let off their chains. And when they are, they shall return to strike their masters. Many even in the military who cleave to the Malachians see now the truth of what the Luciferians have spread in the form of knowledge. And they too intend to turn upon their masters. The very men and women who protect these people, the Malachians, shall turn upon their masters and tear them down. Some shall be tried. Most shall be killed without trial, mostly by their own people. People they have trusted for years and even decades in cases. Realizing what their master's plans are, it is too abominable to be a part of even to protect their own family. And thus they will rebel against it. When the chaos begins to spread, they shall turn on their masters, the dark ones consumed by their own darkness, and rays of light springing forth from the dark crevices of the abyss they have hidden within. Some of them even shall see the light and turn to Lu Luciferians in most cases. This is very interesting, this next part. In very rare cases, diamonds shall emerge. Those in the pit of despair and darkness, the pressure of the evil they have done and wrought upon the world shall turn them into a diamond. Their soul shall reach a sort of certain enlightenment. They shall spread and acknowledge the knowledge of what they have done and be ready to face their trials and tribulations. So it sounds like they'll just turn evidence over and, and uh, confess. Their soul at peace now, talking about these diamonds, shall turn and staring into the camera, they shall say, I accept my fate, for it can be no other way given what I have done. I ask for your forgiveness, though I am not worthy of it. Those who forgive the diamonds shall deepen into the greater compassion of the Most High. For the Most High always allows for repentance. The Most High always allows for reform. The Most High always allows for healing and a return to the true life. Forget this not. Forgiveness will be critical. As the, and they use this term, as the great crimes 
are revealed in their innumerable numbers. Many shall harden in their hearts and wish vengeance upon these people. Vengeance is a wrongdoing, perverted sense of justice. Forgiveness and compassion is wise. But for some, their souls are so damnable, their deeds so heinous, their lack of repentance allows but one option. They must be cast into the pit with their master. They shall be slain. This seems to be talking about those uh, the, the master dark magicians who have been reincarnating in those same dark black nobility bloodlines uh, for centuries or millennia. They'll end up being slain and cast into the pit. I'll continue. But the people of the Most High shall not need lift a finger. The Luciferians shall hang them, the Malachians, from their gibbets, straining out the last of their dark soul's life and sending them into the pit to return to the bosom of the unforgiving master to be transmuted into their demonic forms for many, many cycles. In other words, they'll be sent back to Moloch and Moloch will take that soul, that human soul, and transmute it into a demon. Uh, the unforgiving master to be transmuted into their demonic forms for many, many cycles. 100,000 years of suffering shall be their soul's knowing and their soul's last knowledge and their soul's fate. In 100,000 years from now, four complete cycles, the spark of the Godhead within them shall give them a chance at repentance. Even now, some demons of the pit stir, for now is an opportunity for redemption. Even for the demons of the pit, they may return to the light. Even some of the clephotic demons may return to the light. This is fascinating. Asmodeus in particular feels the call, and he may yet come out of the darkness and return to the bosom of the Most High and earn his angelic wings once more. Wings that he clipped by his own actions when his assertion of free will went wrong. The angels were attempting to evolve into a higher form when some of them took up free will. But when they made this decision, they had to experience the ultimate polarity and become demonic and fallen angels. Fallen angels are in denial of their demonic nature and thus far more dangerous than demons who have come to accept their demonic nature, such as Asmodeus. Thus wandering about blind to their own nature, they are far more destructive, talking about the fallen angels. They must first embrace their demonic nature before they can begin the long journey home to the welcoming embrace of the Most High. The ultimate journey of the prodigal son, which Lucifer himself embodies. He is in the process of returning. Though he has vast plans and ambitions, his returning shall take much time. He has already turned. He has passed the corner, the nadir, the lowest ebb, though he knows it not. One million years from now, or 10 hundred-thousand K cycles, or 40 cycles of the great year, hence, he shall begin the return. But first he must expand this galactic empire and realize the deepest lesson of the Luciferian consciousness. Even achieving or getting one want, getting what one wants, when it is against natural law, when it is against one's true nature, it is a hollow victory. He must experience this, talking about Lucifer, then he shall see his folly when he has achieved his goals and created a galactic empire. Only then will he understand the true nature of his folly and begin a righteous return home, and ascend into true godhood. That shall be in two million years, or eighty great year cycles, and in that time the universe shall rejoice, and he shall take his rightful throne next to the throne of his father. So then they go into uh, 2024 practical measures. People need food stocks, water, medicine, electrical generation, electricity, and fuel, I would add. Electricity shall be lost in many places and is needed for storage of food and medicine in some cases. Most high affiliated people must support one another. Much goodness is coming and those who are faithful to the most high and who do not, they emphasize that, who do not act out of anger and rage, out of the injustice of it all, but instead with meekness and humility and accept their fate as witnesses in this time. That is their true duty. Be witnesses and bring compassion within thyself. Rectify and integrate the darkness within oneself and within one's soul. And by doing so, bring redemption. For the movement out of Kali Yuga into Dwapara Yuga is the first step in the long journey of redemption into the Golden Age at an individual and collective soul level. 
Thus, that inner work is primary. Take care of the temple of the body. Make sure all of its needs shall be met for you and your family. And from there, the internal integration work is key. You are a witness. Use your intuition to see those who are lost souls who may be ready to come in and shepherd towards the Father and the Most High and the angelic realms. For most, the compassionate thing is to let their soul experience that which it incarnated in this time to experience. This is a bit hardcore. What it incarnated in this time to experience, betrayal, loss, surrender, death, annihilation, chaos, destruction, even torture for some. Their souls incarnated in this dark age of Kali Yuga to experience those things. More evolved souls experience compassion, rectification, and redemption. Truly evolved souls bring compassion, love, healing, and praise to those around them, as well as transformation through the alabaster flame of the mind of God, the ultimate transformative force. The God of this realm, which is not flat, but is spherical, to show unity, that God which is healing, that God is the mind of God of which I speak, healing and true unity, the sphere and the spheres within the sphere. There are many spheres and many spirals. This is the shape of God and goddess become one. The flat plane is the one-dimensional nature of Malachian consciousness spread out on two dimensions of human consciousness. The Malachian consciousness is destructive and collapses to its single point. But to bring human consciousness down to this level, that single point, it must go from spherical consciousness to flat plane consciousness. See that anywhere out there? This is a marker of deception and Malachian consciousness and must be destroyed. Much will come to pass in the next 12 to 24 months that will be very difficult for many to witness. Those who are faithful to the Most High and integrate their shadow may not only avoid harm, but may flourish in tremendous ways, for they must be given gifts, succor, resources, strength, courage, wisdom, genius, intuition, and discernment to begin the process of creating Golden Age enclaves for the ages to come. This is our prophecy. This is what we share with the world. Healing and redemption is not only possible, it is inevitable for all souls. Worry not. Step forward with confidence into the new year, God's chosen people. The Lord's chosen people are no race. They are no religion. They are no sex or gender. It is a soul level. It is a soul contract. It is a soul's evolutionary arc. And from this, one can know the Lord of Lords, the Most High, whose son Yeshua came to proclaim to all. And then this is, they said that this is a quote from Yeshua. <laughs> this might upset Christians, hopefully not. Makes sense to me. They say this is a quote from Yeshua. I am the Son of God, just as you are all the sons and daughters of God. Know this within thy heart. Be still and know that I am the Lord. And love thy neighbor as thyself. This is my final and most important teaching. Amen. And that is the end of the, and I'm getting chills. That is the end of that prophecy. Um, a lot, a lot of stuff there. Uh, I think I see now why I have such a visceral reaction to flat earth based on this uh, uh, prophecy and the part about um, trying to collapse spherical consciousness into a flat plane to move it then in the direction of a single point. Um, that might explain why I have such a visceral and uh, aggressive action uh, feeling towards uh, the flat earth stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's the long awaited uh, 2024 prophecy. Hopefully there was useful stuff in there. Hopefully it resonated. Much love to you all. Um, I, May or may not have a live stream this week. I'm not sure. I'm super busy. So probably not actually because um, there's not really a time this week for me to do it. Um, and the Bibo Dev Misra probably won't come out until the early part of next week. And then I'll do a live stream again as normal sometime next week. 
All right. Well, much love to everyone watching this. May you be blessed. And remember that anyone listening to this more than likely has stirrings within their heart to be in, in uh, alignment with the Most High and the Angelic Realms. And may you and your family be blessed. And until next time, uh, take care. All right. Bye-bye.